Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here and welcome back to 31 days of December. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different and I just I wanted to do it um, right now, kind of off the top just to see if it would be something that you guys are interested in. Um, or if it's something that I should maybe leave for a later date. So I thought I would just start off with one of these serial profiles, if you want to call it that. I like the name, but maybe we'll figure something else out. Um, and just see where we go from here. So the first one that I wanted to talk about is the very... interesting? I don't know what word to use. Um, <laughs> the very interesting, but also politically relevant case right now, um, given the day and age and the time that we are living in, which is the case and that of Eileen Warnos. Now, she has been proclaimed one of the first female serial killers in the United States of America. Obviously, she is not the first. I'm sure there are plenty of other women out there before her who have killed many people and maybe never got caught or were eventually convicted, but just not well known because media wasn't that big of a thing back when it happened. So basically, I'm just going to give a quick overview for those of you who don't know about the case or don't know about her, and then talk a little bit about why it is a little bit more politically relevant in today's society. So Eileen Bornos was born February 29th in 1956. And she actually never knew her parents. Her father was in jail when she was born for um, child molestation and abuse. And he actually killed himself in prison. Her mother was basically never around. She was then adopted out. When her adopted mother passed away, her grandfather actually took her in and raised her himself. Now. This is where things started going downhill for her, and it just kind of spiraled from there. She was actually very abused um, and assaulted as a child by her grandfather, and it was uh, at that time when she decided at the age of 11 that she actually started selling herself um, for sexual favors. So she would say, like, I'll do this for you if you give me beer or money or cigarettes. Then she became pregnant at 14, had her child, and they actually had speculated that the father of the child was one of her grandfather's friends. At the end of the day, she was just a very troubled person. She had a lot of history of trauma, a lot of abuse, uh, and she really just was not in the best position to actually deal with any of these things. Once she was kicked out when she was 14 years old, she started finding her own way to handle things. In 1980, um, she actually moved to Florida to work as a prostitute. This was post her brother dying from cancer. Um, so basically anybody that she really wanted to associate with was gone and she fell back on the only thing that she knew of how to get what she wanted. So she was frequently in trouble with the law during this time, of course, particularly for a lot of other crimes um, aside from prostitution, but that as well. By 1991, her record included a lot of things like illegal possession of firearms, uh, forgery, assault, robbery, prostitution, of course, and she was described as having an erratic 
and easily angered personality. I think I would too at the end of the day with everything that happened to her as a child. But you know, people handle with th- handle things differently. She then uh, started a relationship with a woman by the name of Tyra Moore. Um, they ended up becoming very, very close. They were both actually in the business. Most of Eileen's uh, clients were middle-class, middle-aged men, and of course, white. They then basically created a Thelma and Louise type of relationship. They ran across Florida stealing and robbing people, um, luring men in and taking all of their money and then getting rid of them. Until it took a turn for the worse, and she actually started killing her Johns. That's where it leads me to start talking about her crimes and the reason that she was put in jail in the first place. So from 1989 to 1990, she killed seven men. Now, Basically, she went through the same procedure that she had already been doing with her girlfriend of bringing them to their cars for the night to a nice secluded spot, having sex with them, robbing them, and instead of just letting them go, she killed them. So her first victim uh, was a 51-year-old man whose name was Richard Mallory. Um... They actually found his body several several miles away from where his car was abandoned, and he had been shot multiple times in the chest. Her second victim was David Spears, who was 43 years old. He was a construction worker, and he had been shot six times in the torso. Third, Charles... Karskadon, a few days after they found um, David Spears' body, they actually found Charles's body in Pasco County, a part-time rodeo worker who had been shot nine times in the chest and stomach. Obviously, you can see she has a lot of fixation. Next was Troy Burris. He was a 50-year-old salesman, and he was found a week after he was reported missing He was found fully clothed, suffered from multiple gunshots to the head and torso. When they found him, he was partially decomposed, but they did rule that cause of death was gunshots. Next was Charles Humphreys. Um, He was a retired Air Force major, a police chief, and a Florida child abuse investigator. That's a little ironic in this situation. And he was found dead in 1990. Um, and he was fully clothed. He suffered from multiple gunshots and his car was later found abandoned further on in a different county. Next was Peter Symes. He left Central Florida and headed for New Jersey uh, in June of 1990 and his car was found in Orange Springs on July 4th. His body has actually never been found, uh, but... Witnesses all claim that they saw two women around the vehicle uh, where it was found in Orange Springs. So they can only assume that it was her. Um, And I mean, obviously, she did actually end up confessing, too. So there's also that. And the final one was Walter Antonio. Uh, He was partially disrobed, 62 years old, was found in November of 1990 in a remote part of Dixie County. He'd been shot four times in the back and the head, and his car was found four days later in another county. So obviously she was doing a lot of things. Um, There are many, many, many documentaries on Eileen, and there is a movie also that stars Christina Ricci and Charlize Theron. I do believe it's actually on Netflix right now. It is called Monster. And it basically talks about the relationship between Eileen and her girlfriend um, and the fact that 
her girlfriend was not aware of things at the very beginning of it all and that there is some speculation about she was actually given immunity. So there is speculation about the fact that either she knew all of this was happening and she was just playing a blind eye to it or she didn't know that this was happening at all until later on and then just became an accomplice to the fact or was scared that Eileen would come after her. It's all very hard to say, but what they do know is that once they found out um, Eileen was actually arrested for robbery, and then when she was brought into jail, she actually confessed to doing all of the murders, and they then asked her girlfriend to come in and interrogate her and get a confession from her about everything in exchange for immunity from ever being charged as an accomplice. And there is some conspiracy theories about the fact that maybe she actually bribed the police officers and told them that she would give them a cut of any money she made from any movie or TV deals that she made out of this entire situation. But that has never actually been proven. Now... To kind of tie it in and why I said that this is very relevant to today's society and politics is recently in the last few years, we have been dealing a lot with the Me Too movement um, and empowering women and bringing light to sexual assault and rape in everyday life, not even in a specific industry or anything like that. And it's such an important thing because nowadays women are trying to take the steps to not turn out like she did. You know, all they're really asking for is the ability to, all they're really asking for is the ability to express the fact that this has happened to them, to get the help that they deserve, get the help that they need. And be able to get the justice that is deserved from all of this. Now, I'm not saying that it only happens to women. Of course, it happens to men. It happens to people, everybody, no matter where you are. It doesn't matter what race you are, what gender you are. It happens to everybody, period. And all we're asking for is the ability to deal with it in a just manner and get the closure that anybody who is put into this situation deserves in their lifetime. So I think um, there are a lot of things that could be learned from this entire case with Eileen, her history, the abuse that she suffered over the years, the fact that she didn't know any better, but she knew it wasn't right the paranoia that she then suffered from around and circling all men, why she found solace in another woman, and just a lot. It's a lot. It's it's a really heavy topic, and I am going to cut it off there because I could probably talk about it for hours, um, but that is not why we are here. So... It is a relevant thing. I do recommend checking out that movie. I do recommend checking out any documentaries that you can about her, about her life. I am not in any way saying that what she did was right. I don't think killing anybody is the right way to go about anything, no matter what has happened to you. But sometimes people snap and it's not anything that you can help. I think now it's just time that we need to figure out how to actually get people the help they deserve. If you guys want more serial profiles like this um, and talking about the creepy and the dark side and the inner minds of uh, serial killers throughout history, no matter where they're from, please leave me a comment below. Let me know which ones you would like to hear because of course I have my favorites, but I would love to do yours and learn about other serial killers and what goes on in their minds. I have a very, very deep love for psychology. So I find all of this very interesting and very fascinating to me. And I would just, yeah, love to hear what you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up. 
Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notifications so you get told every time I upload a video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.